Hey, what's up Reefers? It has been a while since I've done a video in the car, so I figure let's bring things back to the old school. All right, so about two weeks ago, I went to House of Tropicals to pick up some ghost shrimp for my frogfish. And while there, I saw this really awesome looking uh, porcelain crab. And these are the crab that lays really flat and got like two modified front legs that helps them like capture food from the water column. Awesome, awesome guy. Next up, my great friend Alex. Uh, his rose bubble tip anatomy split again. I mean, his rose bubble tip anatomy split for him maybe four or five times already. And he has the exact same clone as the one I have in Fort Bragg Island. And Sally's tank is mature enough for an anatomy. So we went ahead, went ahead and picked up a small guy. Even though this anatomy is small in Alex's tank, but when it goes into Sally's eight gallon nano tank, man, that thing is huge. But it looks gorgeous. And furthermore, her, her clownfish actually went into the anemone in two or three days, which I'm extremely jealous about because it took my clownfish a year, exactly a year to go into the anemone. So today, this is the July 4th long weekend, I decided to go pick up some more ghost shrimp for my frogfish. Do you see a theme here? Uh, and I went to Tropical Lagoon. This is a LFS that's almost like a, has a really strong mom and pop vibe, but they have a lot of hidden treasures. And they got me good this time. Well, first thing first, I saw Sean there, which is a nice surprise. I walked in, I'm like, who's crazy enough to go to a uh, local fish store on a long weekend, Saturday morning at like 11 o'clock. Well, there it is, Sean. <laughs> he was there to pick up like a, a, he saw like a baby clown trigger that he really likes. So I think he picked that up. And for me, I spent about $200 there, I'm pretty embarrassed. So let me show you what I got. First, of course, I, I got what I went there for, go shrimps. I went ahead and got the deal, 10 snails for $22. I got a small sand tiger conch for $6 for the 45 gallon sand bag. Also for the 45 gallon, I started noticing some bubble algae appearing, so I got two small emerald crab. Okay, now we're getting to the fun stuff. Uh, I love I love little crabs, so I got a anemone crab. And finally, if you're following me on Instagram, you probably know what I got already. They have a lot of uh, feta dendro frags, and they have really good price. So, folks, that's my damage for today. I feel like I'm making up for not buying anything at Reefa Palooza. So I'm gonna go back now and acclimate them, and I'm gonna continue with the tank update. See you guys inside. The 17 gallon drop off tank has been pretty trouble free for me. Keeping Mochi the watch skin frogfish in this tank has been amazing and there are a lot of cool footage I want to share with you guys. But let's quickly talk about the corals first. The zoanthids I planted onto the rock structure has really grown into their spots and they have started to spread. If I want to add more zoas to the rock, I think I need to do it soon. I'll be happy with just mostly orange zoas. The tiny dime sized rose bubble anemone has grown to a quarter size and started putting on nice color. Unfortunately, it is beginning to sting its neighbor, so I will need to move it soon. It will probably go back to the Fort Vec Island tank or somebody local. The bird's nest and kryptonite candy cane have definitely been growing well under the ONF light. After the latest water test, which I posted on my Instagram, I will start dozing calc in this tank as well. The feta dendro frag has been doing amazingly well. It sprouted four or five new heads, and they are slowly gaining in size. It has been such a joy to feed these guys that sometimes I go way overboard. So with the water test I did this morning, while the ammonia in this tank is undetectable, the nitrate was sitting at 40 ppm. Probably thanks to my heavy feeding. So I think I'll be adding some chados to the back chamber in order to help with the nitrate spike. By the way, here is the fat head dendro that I picked up from Tropical Lagoon as shown earlier in this video. It has a really nice deep orange color with a few baby heads sprouting on the side as well. The green saw polyps are going gangbuster. Their growth rate seems to have ramped up exponentially. A few times they crept up right to the rock without me realizing, so I think it may just be a matter of time before I actually get to the rock. I almost feel like I should just let it YOLO and just let it grow wherever it wants. GSP tank, what do you guys think? Lastly, here's the cool anemone crab that I picked up from House of Tropicals. I picked a larger one so that it would not fit in my frogfish mouth and it will stay right by the bubble tip anatomy, so he should be safe tank mate for Mochi. All right, let's talk about Mochi. This little frogfish is adjusting really well to the tank, and I could not be happier. There were two big questions when Mochi first moved into this tank. First question was whether he would fall off the rock work and go to the bottom section of the drop off tank. And the second question was whether he could swim back up to the rock work if he does fall into the bottom section. It just so happened that a few weeks ago, I found him at the bottom of the tank. So that answered the first question I had. I watched him for 20 minutes, just walking around at the bottom. And at one point, he even hovered and swam a little bit. 
I shared that video on my Instagram and he got some love from you guys. After 20 minutes, I had to leave the house, so I got a net into the tank, getting ready to move him. To my surprise, he turned out to be quite a strong swimmer. He was able to swim up to the top portion of the tank with no issue, so it was more a matter of figuring out that he wanted to go up. Ever since that incident, he has always stayed in the rock work at the top portion of the tank. I may still expand the rockscape downwards in the future to give Mochi more room to roam, since he seems to be the most comfortable walking around. I have been feeding Mochi a gut-loaded large ghost shrimp every other day or a small ghost shrimp every day. It has been pretty intense to watch him feed. He only used his lure once, and all the other times he just kind of walked up right to the shrimp and just gulped it down. Speaking of food for Mochi, the two yellowtail damsels are now down to one. Mochi actually caught and ate one of them a few days ago, and he was left with a huge pot belly for a few days. I did not see him actually eating the damsel, but I did catch him pooping a part of it out. <laughs> I'm so sorry for this footage. And after this, I gave Mochi a few days break before I resumed feeding him live ghost shrimps. So I have been trying to wean him on the frozen food, but I've had no luck so far, so I will continue to feed live food. I know some people may not like this, but reef fish is on a frogfish menu in the wild, so I will continue to stock small damsels or chromids once in a while, just so that Mochi can have some natural diet instead of just eating ghost shrimps all the time. There are plenty more things I want to talk to you about in Strop Off Tank, but man, this video has gone on long enough. Thank you for sticking around until the end. If you actually watched till the end, let me know in the comment below so I know who are the hardcore reef squad. Alright, see you guys next Sunday morning. And three, two, one. Let's go move.